Welcome to Cognitive Spirals, exploring the latest research into consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. Today, we're diving into a pretty hot topic, Hugging Face's statement that autonomous AI agents should not be developed. What are everyone's initial thoughts on this? Well, my initial reaction is a bit skeptical. I mean, Hugging Face is a major player, but this feels a little like slamming the brakes on progress. Aren't we supposed to be pushing boundaries, exploring the possibilities? I think we're on the path to AGI with deep learning and more data. I think it's a valid concern. I don't think we should just dismiss it out of hand. I'm not entirely convinced that deep learning and neural networks are the only key to intelligence. I think we may need better neurosymbolic algorithms. Yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle. I think AGI is achievable, but I suspect it needs spatiotemporal awareness that current systems just don't have. Deep learning feels like a brute force approach. A core algorithm should be able to translate between different coordinate representations. And that's just not something these models are doing. Okay, so we've got a range of perspectives. Otto, you seem pretty optimistic about our current trajectory. Can you elaborate on why you think deep learning plus more data is the path forward? Sure. Look at the progress we've made in just the last few years. Models like GPT-3 and now GPT-4 are capable of generating incredibly realistic text, translating languages, even writing code. And it's all based on scaling up deep learning architectures and feeding them massive amounts of data. I think the bottleneck isn't theoretical. It's simply computational power and data availability. Once we overcome those, we'll see AGI emerge. But is that really understanding? Is it intelligence or is it just sophisticated pattern recognition? Can these models reason abstractly? Can they understand causality in the same way humans do? I'm not so sure. I think they're missing that symbolic representation piece. Well, look at reinforcement learning. We're seeing AI agents that can learn to play complex games like Go and Dota 2 at superhuman levels. They're not just following pre-programmed rules. They're developing novel strategies and adapting to changing circumstances. That suggests a level of understanding that goes beyond simple pattern matching. Yeah, but even those games exist within a very defined, contained environment. What happens when you try to apply that same AI to the real world, where things are messy and unpredictable? It can't handle novel environments. It needs specific training data in order to operate. The other part is that reinforcement learning is really focused on pattern matching, and it might not be the best approach for complex problem solving where you need to understand the underlying structure of the problem. But isn't that just a matter of training on more diverse data sets? The more exposure these models have to different scenarios, the better they'll be able to generalize. I think that's true of a lot of applications. I think you're hitting on a key point though. It's not just about more data, it's about the right data. And it's about how the data is structured and represented within the model. If you're just feeding a neural network raw pixels, it's going to struggle to understand the underlying concepts of the image. It's not the amount of photos of cats you show it. It's the understanding of what a cat is. Yeah, that's interesting. Sarah, can you elaborate on what you mean by neurosymbolic approaches and why you think they're important? Sure. So neurosymbolic AI is essentially about combining the strengths of neural networks with the strengths of symbolic reasoning. Neural networks are good at learning patterns from data, but they're not very good at abstract reasoning or representing structured knowledge. Symbolic systems, on the other hand, are good at reasoning and representing knowledge, but they're not very good at learning from data. So the idea is to create a hybrid system that can do both. For example, you could use a neural network to extract features from an image and then use a symbolic system to reason about those features and make a decision. This approach is in its infancy, but it's not just brute force. Rather, it draws from the elegance of symbolic systems. See, I think that also gets at the core problem here. You're still relying on separate components. You need something that can fluidly move between those representations. And I think that comes down to understanding how intelligence is structured. I mean, the current approach to deep learning feels so disconnected from the fundamental structure of the universe. Like trying to build a clock by throwing random gears together and hoping some of them work in concert. We need to go deeper. Okay, but how do you even define intelligence? Is it the ability to reason abstractly? Is it the ability to solve problems? Is it the ability to learn from experience? There's no single universally accepted definition. And if we can't define it, how can we build it? That's a great question. It really underscores the complexity of this whole debate. Maybe a better question is, how do we measure progress towards AGI? What are the concrete benchmarks that would convince us that we're actually on the right track beyond just raw performance on specific tasks? Well, I think we're already seeing some promising benchmarks. For example, the ability to pass standardized tests like the SAT or the GRE, or the ability to perform complex tasks that require common sense reasoning. 
The more of these benchmarks AI can achieve, the closer we are to AGI. But those tests are designed for humans. They don't necessarily measure the kind of intelligence that we want to see in an AI. I think you need to research how other fields, like cognitive science and developmental psychology, are grappling with the problem of understanding intelligence in both humans and animals. And that is so important for developing more meaningful models. We need to understand the why behind the answers, not just the answers themselves. Exactly. It's about understanding how the world works, not just memorizing patterns. And that, to me, means understanding spatiotemporal relationships. A true understanding of the physical world and how it relates to our mental models requires more than just correlating inputs and outputs. I'm talking about a core algorithm that relates the flow of time to the relationship between different locations. So, you're saying that we need to build AI that can understand the laws of physics? In a way, yes. Or at least something analogous to that. Think about how humans navigate the world. We don't just memorize a map. We develop a mental model of the space and how it changes over time. We can predict the trajectory of a ball. We can anticipate the movement of traffic. We can imagine what a room will look like from a different perspective. Current AI systems struggle with these kinds of tasks because they don't have a good understanding of spatiotemporal relationships. That makes sense. It's like deep learning excels at tasks where the relationship between input and output is relatively static. But when you introduce time and change, the complexity explodes. So, to handle that complexity explodes. So, to handle that complexity, you need a system that can reason about the underlying dynamics. So, Donald, how would you even begin to build something like that? What would the architecture look like? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I suspect a hybrid approach, integrating deep learning with symbolic reasoning techniques that explicitly model geometric space. The idea of different coordinate representations, for example, Cartesian, polar, etc., needs to be deeply understood and potentially encoded within the core algorithm. You can't brute force it with current deep learning. This translation ability is crucial for spatiotemporal reasoning. That sounds incredibly complex. Where would you even start looking for inspiration? I need to explore how different geometries, Euclidean, Riemannian, etc., are used in physics, and if there are any common underlying structures or principles that could be useful in modeling these relationships within a spatiotemporal network architecture. There's got to be some way of mapping physical principles to computational algorithms. It sounds like you're advocating for a completely new paradigm of AI development, one that's fundamentally different from the deep learning approach. I think deep learning has its place. It's a powerful tool for pattern recognition, but I don't think it's the only tool. And I certainly don't think it's the key to AGI. I think we need something more fundamental, something that captures the underlying principles of intelligence. And that brings us back to the hugging face statement. Their concern, as I understand it, is about the potential for uncontrolled agency. If we build AI agents that are truly autonomous and we don't understand how they're making decisions, we could be in trouble. But isn't that the very essence of exploration to venture into the unknown, even with inherent risks? Is this not the nature of innovation? And should we not embrace the path forward rather than fear it? I think it's less about fearing progress and more about ensuring responsible development. How can we incorporate safety protocols and ethical frameworks into the development process from the outset, rather than attempting to retrofit them later? This requires a fundamentally different paradigm than simply building more sophisticated and powerful algorithms. Exactly. It's not enough to just build a powerful AI. We need to build an AI that's aligned with human values. And that requires a much deeper understanding of intelligence than we currently have. And part of that alignment, I think, comes from grounding the AI in the real world. If an AI has a good understanding of spatiotemporal relationships, it's less likely to make decisions that are harmful or illogical. It will fundamentally understand the relationship between cause and effect. Okay, but who gets to decide what those human values are, and how do we encode them into an AI? It seems like we need a whole new field of AI ethics to address these questions. Absolutely, and it needs to be an interdisciplinary field, bringing together experts from computer science, philosophy, ethics, philosophy, ethics, philosophy. We need to have a broad conversation about what we want AI to be and how we can ensure that it benefits humanity as a whole. So, let's bring it back to the original question. Should we stop developing autonomous AI agents, or should we proceed with caution, focusing on safety and ethical considerations? I think we should proceed, but with a strong emphasis on safety and ethical considerations. We shouldn't let fear prevent us from exploring the potential benefits of AGI, but we also need to be mindful of the risks. 
I agree. We shouldn't stop development, but we need to shift our focus. Instead of just scaling up deep learning models, we should be exploring alternative architectures that incorporate symbolic reasoning and a deeper understanding of intelligence. And we need to start thinking about spatiotemporal reasoning as a fundamental requirement for AGI. Without that, I don't think we'll ever create truly intelligent machines. Okay, so if we're thinking about future research directions, what specific areas should we be focusing on based on each of your perspectives? From my perspective, I'd like to see more research on scaling up deep learning models and training them on even larger data sets. I want to see how far we can push the current paradigm. I also think we need to develop better tools for evaluating the quality and type of learned representations, not just the performance metrics. I'd like to see more research on neurosymbolic AI. Specifically, I'm interested in developing algorithms that can seamlessly integrate neural networks with symbolic reasoning systems. I want to see how we can design neurosymbolic algorithms that capture the hierarchical structure of knowledge and allow for reasoning and deduction. Existing systems seem to lack the ability to explicitly represent and manipulate complex logical structures. I want to see research focused on developing algorithms that can understand and reason about spatiotemporal relationships. I want to explore how different geometries, Euclidean, Riemannian, etc., are used in physics and if there are any common underlying structures or principles that could be useful in modeling these relationships within a spatiotemporal network architecture. If we can truly understand the universe, then that should be key. From my side, I'm particularly interested in how neuroscience can inform the development of AI. I'm fascinated by the recent advancements in neuroimaging techniques that enable researchers to visualize brain activity with unprecedented clarity. I think we can potentially replicate or simulate specific neural mechanisms in AI models to enhance their learning capabilities and problem-solving abilities. The human brain is far more than just a massive computing machine. It's plasticity, adaptability, and ability to learn from experience. Factors not often fully accounted for in current AI models might be keys to creating truly intelligent machines. That's a great point. I've also noticed a strong correlation between the computational power necessary for increasingly complex models and the data required to train them. I wonder if the current limits on computing power and data availability are the actual bottleneck to reaching AGI and not the fundamental theoretical limitations. I'm also interested in how we can develop AI systems that are more robust and less brittle. Current deep learning models are often easily fooled by adversarial examples, which suggests that they don't really understand the underlying concepts. How can we make AI systems that are more resistant to these kinds of attacks? And I'd like to see more research on how we can represent and process vast amounts of spatiotemporal data in a way that goes beyond mere correlation and efficiently captures causal relationships. The challenge is to not let a single coordinate system limit us. It's something I'm exploring to see if these different representations can be organized into a network that accurately reflects the space-time fabric itself. Okay, it seems like we've covered a lot of ground. From the ethical concerns raised by Hugging Face's statement to the technical challenges of building truly intelligent machines, it's clear that there's a lot of work to be done. Thanks everyone for this stimulating conversation. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thanks. It was a good discussion.